they might seem cute. Helpless. And charmingly innocent. Or they can look fierce. Weird. And downright creepy. In the world of extreme animals, meet the babies. This time on The Countdown, family life is full of ups and downs. Getting on with your siblings can be murder. And being little sucks when you're the punch bag. Life's a struggle for every baby. But for these extreme animal babies, growing up is a real battle. So buckle up to find the top 10 fiercest family fighters in this killer countdown of animal infants. Chile's dramatic coastline is home to our first fighting family. No, not these humble penguins. But the colony of South American sea lions, giving this little guy a hard time on the way home. August through December is mating season. And this can be a mean crowd. Sea lions don't believe in monogamy. Full-grown males tower over females half their size. And Big Daddy takes full advantage of his superior strength to collect himself a harem of up to 18 baby mothers. But he sure isn't interested in the babies. Females are ready to mate within a week after giving birth, which doesn't seem the best timing for their nearly helpless offspring. At any moment, 300 kilograms of testosterone-fueled bull can come charging through your nursery. And if you're in the way of mum's new partner, your sea lion pate. As if being in constant danger of being trampled by their stepdad isn't bad enough, wait till mum heads back out to sea, leaving Junior to the tender mercies of the extended family. The mothers haven't eaten since giving birth several days ago, and they could be away for several hours or as long as three days. For the pups left behind, keeping a low profile is the safest option. These dewy-eyed innocents are at the mercy of their older brothers and cousins. And any other adolescent males hanging round the breeding ground. The supersized alpha males never take their eyes off their breeding females. Which leaves a lot of restless younger males looking for trouble. And wandering out of the colony in search of mum is a seriously bad idea. These are the lawless badlands, and these bandits have no compunction picking on someone not their own size. This pup finds sanctuary in the nick of time. The older male couldn't care less about the pub. He's just defending his space. So straying outside the colony is dangerous, but even sticking with the group is no guarantee you won't be used as a frisbee. And it's hard to keep mum when you don't know where mum's gone. Up to half of sea lion pups don't make it to adulthood. And someone should tell this little chap not to draw attention to itself. Too late. Ooh, that's got to knock your confidence. But this feisty infant wants to give as much as it gets. This furious fighter is going to fit right into this extended family. Further south is the coldest place on Earth. It takes a special kind of animal to live in Antarctica. Meet the Adelie penguin. Every October, Adelis arrive here in their thousands to breed in the tiny window of the Antarctic summer. Creatures of habit, many return to the same nesting spot and hook up with the same partner every year. 
which means trouble if someone else gets in there first. A latecomer has no compunction telling a usurper where to get off. It might not look the coziest nursery, but then nest building is a challenge with no vegetation to speak of. So stones, a hot property round here. Dad's interested with first watch of the newly laid eggs, while Mum races back to sea for her first feed in about a month. Hungry skewers are a constant danger, watching from the outskirts of the colony. Left alone, some dads are more reliable than others, and it only takes a moment's distraction for an egg to go walk about, which means it's toast. The beady-eyed skewers never miss a trick. And despite best intentions, the offspring ends up scrambled. Chicks with less clumsy parents have to grow up fast. These fluff balls have to transform into waterproof torpedoes in less than eight weeks. Or they'll be left behind when the whole colony up sticks and returns to the sea for the winter. At three weeks, the chicks are big enough to join a crash, hanging out with other youngsters. While mum and dad are off bringing home the bacon, or in this case, the krill. Going in a gang is the best protection against lurking leopard seals. But no one likes to be last to put their toe in the water. Leaving kids to entertain themselves is always a risky business. Those predatory skewers are the main reason the deli chicks don't make it to adulthood. And while playing in a gang is safer, you've got to hold your nerve. Babysitters one, skewer nil. There's safety in numbers. But living in close proximity does have its disadvantages. Which could explain why stranger danger isn't the only threat to Adeli chicks. Aggressive colonists don't take kindly to crash chicks wandering into adult space. These beatings by the neighbors can be serious. Chicks can be injured or worse. Actually, this little guy is just fledging. He'll be fine. So you'd think everything would be rosy when mum or dad finally gets home. Think again. Adeli parents like to torment their chicks by bringing back lunch and then running away with it. The siblings have to race each other for their meal, chasing the fleeing parent until one chick gives up. The loser will get fed if there's enough food. It seems this tactic allows the parent to make sure it's feeding its own chicks, as hangers-on soon give up, and to feed each chick in peace. Only five of Indonesia's 17 and a half thousand islands are home to these fearsome creatures. But on their home territory, it's pretty hard to miss the world's largest living lizard, the Komodo dragon. Dragons are top of the food chain here and can reach up to three meters in length. The larger males can weigh up to 80 kilograms and don't hesitate to throw that weight around when competing with the lads over a potential date. But all of them start life as an egg. And after around eight months in the underground nest, it's getting a little cramped for the now fully formed baby dragon. This little guy is in no hurry to let go of its security blanket. 
female Komodo dragons go to great lengths to protect their eggs, even building false nest holes to put egg-stealing predators like wild pigs off the scent. She'll hang around, guarding the nest for up to eight or nine months. But Junior is wise to be cautious. Komodo dragons will eat virtually any creature they can get their shark-like teeth into. And that includes their own hatchlings. Yeah, best stay in there. Size doesn't matter to a dragon. They'll tackle anything that moves. Venomous glands between their razor-sharp teeth make dragon spit a potent toxin that can turn buffalo into buffet. But with some meals, like this takeaway turtle, it's the packaging that's the problem. Their lack of discernment in dining means that the biggest threat to baby Komodo dragons is the adults. And that includes mum and dad. So in spite of all her efforts to keep the eggs safe, if mum claps eyes on her newly hatched offspring, all she sees is a snack between meals. This is one occasion when you don't want the proud parents watching your first hesitant steps into the outside world. In fact, adult Komodo dragons are so dangerous to their young that the only safe place is up a tree. This toddler will be playing Tarzan in the treetops for the next three or four years, until it's big enough to venture into adult company without being on the menu. These blind and almost bald newborns are still at the pink and wrinkly stage. And you'd think only a parent could love them. Except this meerkat babysitter could just as well be an aunt or an uncle or older sibling. Meerkats are the poster boys and girls for family cooperation. Living in burrows in southern African deserts in groups of up to 40, most of the clan will be siblings or offspring of the dominant female. Which means an endless supply of babysitters for the matriarch's pups. One or more of the clan is always stuck looking after the pups while the rest are out foraging. Now they've grown a bit more fur, the babies are pretty hard to resist. So meerkat life is full of collaboration and harmony. And fighting. From tiny tots to teenagers and beyond, meerkat babies expend a lot of energy play fighting. Wrestling is fun, and playing together like this is a sign of a healthy community. It might also help to reinforce the social bonds that keep meerkat society functioning. The desert may be home, but it's a rough neighborhood to hang out in. So much so, that less than half these kids are likely to make it through their first year. Threats from above are closely monitored, and there's only one thing to do when a hawk's about. Run. But ground-level predators are a different matter. This puff adder is venomous enough to kill a human. And while this one is chugging down a small rodent, it wouldn't turn its nose up at a baby meerkat or two, given the chance.
also a snake on the patch, is a call to arms for the mob. Adult meerkats are resistant to its poison, but a bite can still do damage. So speedy reactions are key to persuading this sneaky predator to find its dinner elsewhere. All for one and one for all. And the babies are there on the front line bobbing up and down with the best of them. The timing could use some work. This adder decides a low profile is the best option. And for today, the family can relax. The supersized tail that gives long-tail macaques their name comes in handy for childcare. Which is just as well, as like all babies, being curious about your world can lead to trouble. But macaque mums take great care of their babies. Macaques live in extended family groups where females gang together. Babies grow up surrounded by attentive aunts, sisters, and cousins who are all intensely interested in any new family member. Sometimes too interested. An over-enthusiastic babysitter can start a tug of war and might even kidnap the hapless youngster given the chance. The strict hierarchy of macaque society means that higher caste females have no problem telling an overzealous nanny where to get off. But lower caste females just have to suck it up if a dominant female decides to assert her position by punching Junior in the face. Not surprisingly, babies born to macaque aristocracy have a better survival rate than their lower caste cousins. But there are other hazards to contend with. The outskirts of human habitation aren't the most salubrious habitat. But a rubbish dump can be a rich source of food if you're not too fussed about the view. And why pick your own bananas when someone else can do it for you? A busy road provides some of the best foraging. And a different world to explore. With always plenty of toys for the kids. But it's not just the traffic that makes it a dangerous playground. Little monkeys don't exactly get the best lessons in road safety from the adults. The perks of rank make no difference in a contest with a car. Some babies will never get a second chance to learn the road code. The ring-tailed lemur struts its stuff to the east of Africa, one of the many species unique to the world's fourth largest island, Madagascar. Like the macaques, Lima society is run by the females, but with these primates, everyone goes gooey over babies. When Junior pipes up, can you carry me? It could be dad or even an unrelated male who takes a turn. Leaving mum free to hang out with the girls. A break from foraging in the middle of the day means playtime. And after playtime, it's bath time. 
It may be all sweetness and light within the immediate family group. After all, this is an animal that has perfected the stare as its first line of intimidation. But when the neighbors encroach too far on the food supply, lemurs prepare for battle. You might think the sensible thing would be to leave the baby safely out of harm's way with a minder or two. But no. It's the females that face off, and they take their babies with them. The infants have to hold on for their lives, literally. If these little rodeo riders fall off in the middle of a fight, they're almost certainly toast. Under this peaceful-looking surface lurks the next countdown contender. And it's Mum. Easily tipping the scales at up to 45 kilos at birth, a baby hippopotamus is going to grow up to be a world heavyweight. Only elephants and rhinos come in larger sizes on land. But hippos are drawn to the water. A cooling dip can be all very well for mum, but it's a bit trickier when you're small. Fortunately, being born underwater means hippos are experts at holding their breath. Infants can stay submerged for about two minutes. Adult hippos manage at least five. Which still isn't a patch on their closest living cousins, the whales. I don't know Hippos haven't gone as far as living in water, but they do spend most of their days lounging in it. I don't know anybody quite like me. For a vegetarian, they sport an impressive set of canines. They're one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. But their terrifying teeth are mainly used on each other. The male's canines can reach half a meter in length. And jaw-to-jaw -jaw contests settle territorial disputes. Adult males can be a serious danger to infants. So it's smart to keep close to mum. Even if she won't wait for your little legs to keep up, and it's never too soon to practice mouthing off. Play fighting helps develop the moves the youngster will need as an adult. And with no serious teeth to speak of yet, no one's going to get hurt. Which isn't the case when the herd takes umbrage at a neighbor invading their space. Hippos rule the waterways, and you don't want to get on the wrong side of this crowd. This crocodile is lucky to escape with its life. But there's one animal that even the hippos won't argue with. This bull elephant is in no mood to be polite when his way to the water is blocked. Not content with clearing the way, he seems out to make a point. I wouldn't stop there, Junior. The pod keeps watch. But today, everyone's keeping their mouths shut. There's no contest for this territory. And as the baby makes a break for the river, all Mum can do is hold her breath and hope Junior's been practicing holding his. The baby's still not out of danger. Now he could be in danger of being trampled by accident. Or on purpose. This bull really got out of the wrong side of bed today. 
but he seems to have made his point. And Junior lives to see another day. No thanks to the rest of the pod. The arid landscape of North America is the unlikely habitat for the water-loving amphibians that are the next fighting family. Meet the tadpole of the spadefoot toad. Less than two weeks ago, these infant toads-to-be were nothing but a twinkle in their parents' eyes. There's a reason these youngsters need to grow up fast. This North American species obviously likes a challenge, choosing to live in places where the sun dries out the land for most of the year, and often relying on pop-up ponds to breed. Adult spadefoots dig their way out of the sun, burying themselves during the dry season. But this isn't called Death Valley for nothing. And your tadpole soup if your pond disappears before you can stretch your legs. Most of the brood browse on algae and tiny waterborne organisms. But some discover that broadening their menu by munching on other tadpoles gives them a fast track to growth. Not surprisingly, eating your pond mates doesn't make you popular. Cannibal tadpoles hang out by themselves while childhood is more sociable for the less aggressive omnivores. The tadpoles like to sample their food. A quick taste test tells them if they're closely related to lunch. And if the flavor is family, close family, the lucky tadpole may be spat out. The Arizona mountains are home to a family drama played out under the placid surface of seasonal ponds. The amount of fight in the next extreme baby is dependent on the weather. The tiger salamander responds to the call of spring by leaving its winter burrows to return to its birthplace and start the next generation. The female deposits up to 100 eggs in a mass and then leaves the offspring to their own devices. It's probably better she doesn't know what goes on behind her back. After four weeks, the larvae hatch out. Their feathery headdresses are actually the gills that allow them to breathe underwater. They grow rapidly after hatching. And some are growing faster than others. There's a gruesome secret to their success. Most of these baby amphibians are plankton eaters, existing on tiny organisms in the pond water. But their big-headed siblings get their sinister power boost from chewing up their harmless pond mates. They're in a race against time to transform from water babies into air-breathing adults before their home disappears under the baking Arizona sun. Turning Hannibal the cannibal in a hot, dry summer not only boosts their food supply, it reduces the competition for space. These cannibals aren't entirely oblivious to family ties. If the lunch potential smells like sibling, it's probably safe. A more distant relative, or even a stranger, makes a more acceptable snack if there's a choice. But when food is in short supply, family ties can suddenly seem much less important than dinner. Years with more rain take the pressure off family meals, and plankton eaters are more likely to survive. Winter temperatures in Alaska can reach minus 40 degrees. So curling up underground to hibernate is a grizzly bear's best option. Especially when she's bringing more tiny grizzlies into the world. Grizzly cubs start life in the dark. 
which makes the outside world even more exciting when they finally get to explore. They could be with mum for over three years, and in this one-parent family, she's the center of their little lives. Dad is out of the picture, which is just as well. Adult male bears are the cubs' greatest danger. These youngsters are going to keep mum out of the mating game for at least three years. But if they're taken out, she'll be ready to start again when the mating season comes around. So wannabe daddies have no compunction killing cubs. Or they could just be looking at a handy-sized snack. Keeping Junior off the menu is a strong incentive for mum and kids to keep to themselves. But salmon season sends everyone into a spin. The fish are trying to make it from the sea to their spawning grounds turning the rivers into a gourmet banquet for bears who gather in large numbers at this outdoor buffet. Even with such an abundance of fish suppers, tempers can fray. And dominant males will throw their weight around fighting for the best spot. It can be a dangerous place for little bears experiencing their first fishing trip. And sticking close to mum is essential for survival. The approach of another mother with two older cubs isn't seen as a threat by mum, but the triplets aren't taking any chances. It's probably safer for the two mums to hang out together with their cubs in the crowded river space. The big males are claiming the prime spots, and they guard them jealously. So moving into the river is risky for the cubs. And don't look now, but they've been noticed. There's only one thing more dangerous than an aggressive male bear. And that's your mum. She's risking her own life. Mothers can be killed defending their cubs. He could be twice her size, outweighing her by 250 kilos. But this guy knows he's met his match. It is dangerous to be here, but the mothers need to eat and feed their cubs. The abundance of food at the salmon run helps build up the family's fat reserves to get through the winter. And the cubs need to learn. But mum can't keep her eye on them all the time. And whitewater rafting wasn't supposed to be on the agenda. One little cub won't be needing his supper tonight. It's not Mum who fishes it out of the river. Keeping out of the way of the male of the species and paying attention to Mum is the best survival strategy for little bear cubs. Cuckoos have a different approach to family life. Their idea of parental care is finding some other sucker to bring up baby. This venous-throated parrot bill has beavered away building a cozy nest for her five eggs. Little does she know it, but she's under surveillance. And as soon as she leaves to find food, the cuckoo zips in. The parrot bill isn't away for long and settles back, seemingly unaware that she's now sitting on a time bomb. The cuckoo has tossed out two parrot bill eggs to make room for her single supersized one and carries on her merry way looking for the next unwitting foster mother. She'll lay up to 22 eggs, each one in a different nest. Throwing your infant to the tender mercies of total strangers might seem reckless, 
But this parenting strategy is so effective that cuckoos have colonized every continent apart from Antarctica. The incubation period of the cuckoo chick is shorter than the hapless host's own chicks, making sure it hatches first. This homicidal infant then eliminates the competition. Right under the beak of their mum and dad. In less than two weeks, the alien infant fills the nest, dwarfing its hard-working foster parents, who keep feeding their monstrous only child even after it leaves home. The forbidding land of rocky cliffs and icy seascapes provides the nursery for the next feisty youngster. The Siberian coast and remote rivers of northeast Russia are the breeding ground for the stellar sea eagle. With a wingspan that can reach almost two and a half meters, it's mum who sets the records as one of the world's largest eagles. She can outweigh dad by up to a third. None of the neighbors are going to take on an adult sea eagle. But eggs and chicks need to be safe from predators. There are always other parents on the lookout for the kids' lunch. So sea eagles go to great heights to keep the chicks out of harm's way. Which is a bit ironic, as despite this happy family meal, the biggest danger to one of these chicks lurks within the nest. Both parents can be away for hours on their fishing trips. And while their backs are turned, Stella's sea eagle chicks take sibling rivalry to the extreme. One chick decides it would rather be an only child and starts beating on its hapless nestmate. You might think that the bully would be for it when dad comes home. But he clearly couldn't care less. Mind you, its elders don't exactly set a better example. One less mouth to feed gets the thumbs up. And in the eagle family, out of two or three eggs, often only one chick will get to fly the nest. But then, when your wingspan can reach two meters, you do need the room when you start trying them out for the first time. Our number one family fighter looks pretty harmless at this age. But it's going to grow up into one of these. Africa's stunning variety of wildlife is nothing but a smorgasbord to the spotted hyena. These are one of Africa's top predators, and they're not fussy about who's on the menu. With a bite force powerful enough to crunch bones and acid bath stomachs that can even digest teeth, spotted hyenas can reduce a full-size zebra to scraps in less than half an hour. On a night out with their mates, these spotty marauders will take on almost anything. And that includes a pride of lions at a kill. No one else would have the audacity to play tug of war with a lioness's dinner. But when this extended family decides to party, Africa's top predator turns into a pussycat chased up a tree. And guess who has the last laugh? It's their tight social network that makes hyenas so successful. They live in complex clans of anything from three to 90 individuals. And everyone knows their place. The hierarchy is strictly enforced, with status passed down from mother to daughter. Because in hyena society, the females are in charge. Even the baby females. 
The raised tail shows this tiny princess is lording it over this lower-ranking adult, and he submits to her inspection. At this age, it's all a bit of a giggle. She knows she can always run back to mum. Female hyenas are attentive parents, and they keep the milk supply flowing for up to 16 months, one of the longest weaning periods of any mammal. Mums raise their kids together in communal nurseries, and in this social network of female relatives, a few unrelated males are allowed to hang around to help produce the next generation. But it's girl power that rules. And this is a girl. Spotted hyena females don't only wear the trousers, they've got the equipment to go in them. Hyena cubs get marinated in an ultra-high dose of testosterone in the womb. It not only produces the extreme anatomy that used to fool people into thinking that they were hermaphrodites, they're not. It also gives baby hyenas such a burst of aggression that they come out of the womb fighting. These tiny infants are born with sharp teeth, and unusually, their eyes are open so they can see where to bite. Litters are small, usually only two cubs, but here, a third newborn gets the family greeting. This isn't play fighting. This is a life and death struggle for dominance. One out of four won't make it through the first month. Once all the dust has settled and the bodies have been disposed of, the pups that survive have sorted out their place in the pecking order. All homicidal intent is forgotten and everyone can be friends. Well, most of the time.